putting on my shoes, went to go grab my socks and pass out. And come to find out, I was diagnosed with a brain tumor. And it was right around the time the Grammys were coming up and we found out we won a Grammy. started that if you ever uh, one make fun of or two uh, act like a thirsty animal around my beautiful fucking fiance ever again you piece of shit what yeah i saw you dude you met saw her one me time what? you you met her one time you put your foot up on the counter and you're like great eyes by the way and then you use the <laughs> same line you always use on every girl i ever introduced you my whole fucking life <laughs> you what are you doing later you say that to every fucking. You say that to girls at four a.m. I, I bring here. What I don't do you know think if, they're doing later, I bro. I think he pulled another line, bro. No, he's just a piece of shit, bro. He's like fucking. <laughs> you know what I said? I, I don't think he heard this one. <laughs> yeah, say it. Nah, nah, I'm not gonna say it. Can I say it? Yeah. Yeah. He said, "Do you like older or younger brothers?" <laughs> just fucking asshole, bro. Hey, man. The thing is, she likes younger brothers though, so we're good. Welcome back to Impulsive, the number one podcast in the world. That is a fact. If you are not subscribed, make sure to subscribe. Hit that button. We do an extended audio Q&A with the guest after the visual is done on Spotify and iTunes. It gets juicy, so make sure you check it out there because honestly, I want to raise in the charts. To be honest, rate us five stars, please, and hit that subscribe. What do we have right what, now? What, what, uh, what star, do you mean? How many stars do we have? Probably six or seven. Yeah. Out of five? Up, upwards no of that. No shit. It's the number one podcast in the world. Do you think we're pushing four? What am I, a bitch? It's fucking mm -mm, amazing, no. dude. Mm -hmm. You're incredible. Hey, I got a question, dude. What's up? Y'all got insecurities? Of course. I hate my pinkies. I just noticed. Pinkies. Pinky I hate toes them. or pinky hands? My pinkies, bro. I hate them. And my, my ex-girlfriend actually called me out on it. Like when I do this, dude, Ugh. there's a slight bend. There's always a, like a 30 degree bend and I hate it. Wait. Nick, tell and, and I noticed when I'm like Millie rocking, Millie rocking yeah. or like sometimes dabbing and I just, I don't know. No, it's aerodynamics, you isn't, know? Exactly. And I run slower because there's nothing I can do about it. Well, there's probably something you could do about it. Like what? Surgery. Surgery. <laughs> That's a good idea. 3D printing. Hey, thanks for giving me uh, my AirPods back today. Yeah, yeah you're welcome, You bro. had them for six yeah. months. Yeah, well, somebody stole mine, so then I stole yours. That's, that's uh that's yeah how it works. So There's it a thing called karma. There's a thing called karma. Yeah. Two by the way, make a right. I by wonder way, what you did to get your, your you, AirPods you stolen. You gave me two, and I only need one because that's what's fucking in. I saw Jake Paul do it. That's what's Give in. me the other. I'll take three. <laughs> Guys, do it different. We have a special special guest today i the the intro that i wrote down is that incredible and it's kind of long so give me one second i'll wave you in okay i want to introduce our guest this is gonna be a good one <sighs> guys bringing him on he's got one of the most inspirational transformation stories in the world he used to be two chains manager he's done world tour on world tour won a grammy got diagnosed with a brain tumor became vegan lost 130 pounds ran three marathons and an iron man and is now a Nike athlete. It's Charlie Rocket. Woo! <laughs> in, Woo! in astronaut oh. form. Oh. What's up? What's up, everybody? This is wow. incredible. What's Damn. up, <laughs> You ready to blast off? What are you doing? It's a good looking refrigerator you got there, brother. <laughs> what is that? This is incredible. Wow. This right here is a backpack that Nike gave me. So, no way. So my name is Charlie Rocket, and this is a real life NASA backpack that they made into a Charlie Rocket backpack. And I brought you a gift, brother. Whoa. No, you're lying. I brought you a gift. Bro, I, oh, I didn't even bring you on. This was Spencer's Connect. This is amazing. Did you bring Spencer a gift? Nah, fuck him, right? Nah. No. Oh, 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 he, oh, he sure. does have a gift. Is it a book? Spencer, you got a I'll gift. I'll take brother. a book. Hey, I'm always down for books. Spencer first. Oh, oh, Spencer does have a gift. Wow. Hey, congratulations wow. to you, you two and all. That's it's gotta incredible. be something special yeah. to just get gifts on a, on the podcast. Sh should we open them at the same time? At, like as best like best friends? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm That's done. Cool. Hey, wait, before you show Straight, me the gift, man. did this make it to the moon by chance, or was it like a training back backpack it, it, for astronauts? It, it didn't make it to the moon, but it is going to the moon. Yeah. Oh, I feel you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I'm, about to. I'm 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 going to the oh, moon. Oh, that's tight. All right. Maybe we'll go together. Hey, this is crazy. It literally, literally looks like there's a refrigerator in here. Oh my it, god! It's a Nike. It's oh, oh my shit. god! I hope there's money in here. Oh Lots my of god! It. Wow, we got a tin treasure chest here. It, what do you think is? I have no idea what it's going to be. Oh, whoa. coordinates. There's coordinates. Wow. There's GPS coordinates. Wow. I, sure. What do we got? Oh, it's a gray box. Dude. Oh my god! Nah, I would say that's tan. You're colorblind. I'm colorblind. Yep. Colorblind. It's, it's, a, what? it's okay. You bought me a, a box. Yeah, man. A box. Inside of a box. That's tight. Inside What's of an inside astronaut this backpack. Box. We're going to open them at the same time? Let's do it. Without Mike, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hey, you can't do it with hey, me. Charlie, you didn't, 
I don't have you didn't, one. You so. didn't need to, need to do this, man. I appreciate this. It's all good, brother. This is great. I like how you know to talk into uh, the mic because a lot of guests are just industry. talking. Yeah, I feel you. you know. right. <laughs> hey, should we do this? Let's do it. Three, two, one. Best friends. Oh, talk. shut the fuck up. Ooh. Oh, brand new cakes. Oh, shit. Brand new dude, cakes. These are fucking <laughs> dope. Yeah. I could tie these up real nice. Damn. Hey, Damn. Hey, these are fire. Yeah, man. I appreciate oh you, bro. Oh, my God. Hey, these are, these the are off-white fire. press, though. I, oh, it is the off-white. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's go. Off-white, baby. I love, I love white Gosh. shoes. I needed to pair of these. How are you feeling time. about your gift, Mike? I was just looking at them. I was like, yo, I don't know if these are going to fit, but damn, these shits are fucking dope, bro. <laughs> is this with the hey. suede check, too? Damn. Bro. Hey, man, you get a blue check, oh, and you know what? Some of us have to enjoy the luxuries of life. Question. Question. Mike, got, Mike got verified today. Hey, congratulations. It's a Thank you, day. man. But still, fuck me on the shoes, right? Here's my question. <laughs> Is it worse to show up to a party without a bottle of wine or to show up like to a party where there's like three birthday people with only two gifts? What would you say? <laughs> Like, you know how you roll up to a, like a party, you don't have a bottle of wine, you're like an asshole. There's always Venmo, brother. Oh. oh. Wait, you're going to send me a Venmo? <laughs> Maybe. Oh, Not shit. Okay. I was going to go. I'll be honest, dude. Mike doesn't need any other shoes. All shit. he does is elliptical stuff. <laughs> That's like, true. You're out running and, and Mike, Mike's just stationary. Yeah. Um, so listen, bro. Hey, thank you for the gift. This is awesome. It's and my these, pleasure, these, man. These are really cool. I, I, you have yet to get a, the Off-White X Nike uh, collab. Those are awesome too, Spence. Yep. yep. Yeah, man. We're Air Max. We're winning. Air Max day just passed. I don't know. Uh, man, I don't even know really where to start with you because you have such a compelling uh, story. I, I, I kind of just want to let you talk for a bit and and talk about some of the stuff you've done because it's it's actually incredible, man. Um. So yeah, Charlie you, Rocky, man. what's your story? Where do you, where do you come from? Who are you? Man, I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia. Man, dream as a kid was to be an athlete. But I was like, I was chubby. So it didn't exactly like work out how I thought. Hmm. You get to that age in school where like, you need something to be good at. You start liking girls and you're like, all right, I need something to be good hmm. at. And no matter how much I played basketball, no matter how much I trained, the second I learned how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, like when I was that height, oh, no. you know, I just couldn't lose weight. I was too, I was too into food. Cause you just kept making PB and J's all day. That's Dangerous. That's a trap. Yeah. So, so I said, you know what? I need something to be good at. And I said, you know what? Culturally at the time, it wasn't exactly cool to be an entrepreneur, but mm. I've always kind of had this like gift of seeing around the corner. Like what's going to be that next thing? And I was like, you know what? I'm going to dress up like a businessman. I'm going to go to school with a briefcase. No way. I'm a, I, I swip, switched out the backpack for the briefcase, put on a suit, and I gave myself a, a superhero name. I always give myself these superhero okay. names if I want to become something. Like right now, you call me Charlie Rocket because when I was 300 pounds and I want to become an athlete, I said, you know what? My name is Charlie Rocket. And then boom, I became a Nike. Okay. Ad. It's funny. Right, he, awesome. he calls himself uh, <clears throat> Google Preferred Man because he wants to become back on Google Preferred. I really just want to please <laughs> badly. Take, take and me so back. it's like a big superhero please. thing where it just. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, no, anyways, let's get back to <laughs> Sorry, real, real life stuff. <laughs> so so I said, CEO Charlie. Boom. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. That's That what's, was going to be me. What's your real name? Charlie, Charlie Jabbly. Okay, okay, okay. So I called myself CEO Charlie, uh, became a businessman. And growing up in Atlanta, like when my friends started like rapping, I was like, all right, this is something right here. This hip hop thing is going to be big. Mm. I would go to my mom, say, Ma, can I put a studio in my bedroom? I lived across the street from the high school. So after school, like a couple people started coming and then like 50 people started coming and we were just like putting out music. And I was like, all right, I'm going to start a website. Were you engineering or yeah, producing? I was, in, I was engineering. Okay, okay. Built a website, blew up. Interscope record. Everybody is calling me wanting to buy my website. It was called spitchergame.com. Okay. In Atlanta, there was the big dance movement. Crank that, basically everything. And I was the center of this movement. Time goes on a little bit. I go off to college. One day I get a phone call from Interscope Records. Say, we just signed an artist. And he said, he wants you to be his cameraman. Like my website was like a media outlet. Mm -hmm. Like I, I did video work for all the independent artists. Got it. That artist, they got signed to Interscope. His name was Soldier Boy. So Soldier Boy told his record label, because he was a fan of mine. He lived in Batesville, Mississippi, okay. when I was in Atlanta. And he was just a fan of what we were doing. Ended up dropping out of school, going on tour with Soldier Boy. I see, I see like the future. Like I'm finally going to make it. Like mm. CEO Charlie is, is a real oh, yeah, thing now. Yeah. I ended up getting fired by Soldier Boy. Why? 
um, apparently, as a as a cameraman, you're not supposed to tell the superstar that he's messing up too much. And oh, I was, <laughs> you didn't stay in your lane. I did not stay no, but in my that's, lane. That's good because you weren't being a yes man, correct? It's true. it's true. What did you tell him he was doing wrong? Um, he was he was like like at the Atlanta rap movement was my scene, Got it. and he was starting to take some lyrics from my friends. And it was like, hey, those are my, you know, I look crazy because like you're not really from Atlanta. Mm. Like he he had family in Atlanta, but he was from Mississippi. And I'm in Atlanta and our rap scene, our dance movement that we had going, that was ours. So now I'm with him and everybody's looking at me crazy like, Charlie, what's up with your friend? Soldier Boy. Like, why is uh, he like uh. taking our stuff? And I'm like kind of stuck in the middle. So, you know, one thing led to another uh, album came out. Crank That Soldier Boy, that whole first album came out. And we're in Atlanta. It's the last day of the promo tour. Next day, we're supposed to go to uh, Jimmy Fallon. I didn't get the itinerary from, from the manager. Mm. Oof. And I'm like, you know, I'm just going to be proactive. I'm just going to go to the airport like we always do every morning. We know we're going to L.A. Yeah. Nobody's answering my phone call. Not the management, not the Damn. road manager, not the security. There's only one person who would answer my phone call, and that was the DJ. They were ghosting you. They were ghosting me. And I'm at the airport for like four hours. And I realized, you know what, let me just go home. I'm going to tell my mom, yeah, like, I think I'm fired. And, you know, can I move back into the basement? She said, she said um, well, what, what are you going to do? I said, look, 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 look. This is a great thing. Because being out there on that road, like I got to see who's really making the money and it's not the cameraman. It's the manager. Yeah. I'm going to be a manager. I'm going to be the biggest manager in the game. I'm going to manage rappers. She looked at me. She said, how the hell are you going <laughs> to? You're 19 years yeah. old. What yeah. do you know about managing rappers? I said, no, nah, like, like this is what I'm going to do. And I went out and I signed a girl group. I got them signed to Interscope Records. Six months later, they fired me. Charlie, why? Why do you keep getting fired? <laughs> well, for them, they left me for Sierra's manager. They were like, well, we're a big group now. We can't have a 19-year-old manager. And okay. I'm like, you know, a lot of that happens in entertainment. Yeah. Like, you know, the disloyalty. And I'm right back to my mom's basement. And, and I said, I said, Ma, like, I, I, I know where I messed up. See, that was a girl group. They were kind of poppy, you know. It's like, I'm from Atlanta. We got to go to the strip club. Get, get those roots in. Yeah, we yeah, got go back to your roots. I feel you. <laughs> no, no. It's you not gotta a joke. Go to Magic not, City. Yo, not to, not exactly. to sidetrack too much, but I, I went to Atlanta for two weeks and made uh, made music with Polo. Did Don? Uh -huh. That's sure my know. boy. Oh, We're really? in a little weight loss competition right now. No we can get way. A six pack. That's my boy. No way. Yeah, man. Yo, he was telling me about all the, all the stuff he does to lose weight. He bikes a lot. That's his thing. Yeah. When I started biking across America, he did. I actually... Two days ago this year is when I started biking across America. And he did the first day with me. So we biked from here to Long Beach together. Gotcha. He brought him and a couple of his artists out. He took me, the first place he took me was a strip club, Ch Ch Cheetah? Cheetah. Oh, that's like, was that's that where, it? Yeah, that's where he would take you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's where he would take you. <laughs> what the fuck, Polo? <laughs> Why? Oh, Polo, no. you got to take him to the Blue Flame. Okay? No, nah, no, nah, I met Ooh. some nice girls there. <laughs> Shout out Sarah Mundo. The food is good there. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's, Yes. It's a good place. Yes, to that's eat. why he took me there. Yes. We had some sort of chicken. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> what? It was just chicken. What's so funny about fucking chicken? Uh, this is a funny thing to remember for a strip club. They had some sort of chicken. There. It's, it's actually the uh, the culture it tells me a lot Atlanta. about what the strippers look like. They're, they're, they're good. They had a great chicken. I know, uh, it's it's a, it doesn't great matter. Pasta. It doesn't matter. If the food is good. So you went back to your roots. Fire code all sorts. Went just, back to my roots. I strip signed, club. I signed a strip club group. No way. And Wait, what does that mean? Wait, what? So so at the time, like, who was popular at the time? It was like Jeezy Chingy. and T.I. were popular and, and Ludacris. It was that era of Atlanta. And I was like, it's time for the up-tempo dance music to come back. Mm. Like, Ying Yang Twins had been out of the picture for a while. And I was like, all right, there's this group. They make music I love. They're on the east side of Atlanta. Uh, I'm living in my mom's basement. They're living in their mom's basement. Their name was Travis Porter. And I said, look. Mm. We're not going to sign a record deal because I didn't want their head to get big too fast. Mm -hmm. I said, 
we're going to do this independently. And I would drive from every radio station, from Jackson, Mississippi to Washington, D.C., and I would stand outside those radio stations. I would knock on the window of the program director and like... I've got a group that you need to hear. You have radio advertisements you need to sell, and this is what the kids like. Did they have records? Yeah. We, like Travis Porter, he had what Let Me Take You Out. Was that that's him, yeah? That was a good song. Let me take you out. A late. Okay now, uh, ladies. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, make yeah. it rain. Make it rain. Yeah, yeah. Make oh, it, yeah, yeah. Bring it back. Bring it back. So that was and Travis Ooh. Porter was actually three guys. See, you're a little oh. bit younger. See, see, it was like the generation uh, right before you. Okay. But in Atlanta, it was it was like we had the biggest bidding war going in all of hip hop. Like I was 19 years old and this was my chance at finally making it. And I was like, I can't screw this one up. This is my shot. Mm -hmm. And every record label in the game is calling me. Diddy's calling me. I let Diddy know up front. I was like, look, we're not really interested in signing the bad boy. Um, And I, I had a bidding war going. Huge. Record labels called, let us fly you up, Charlie. I was like, uh, uh. Flying myself up, because when I leave your meeting, I'm gonna walk across the street and I'm gonna meet with Warner Brothers. Oh shit! And this is gonna be a big oh, bidding damn. war. And record labels hated me. They hated Charlie because I was just this young knucklehead. We had this huge uh, deal going in New York, and uh, meet with all the record labels. Meet with Warner Brothers in the morning. Then we go to Mr. Childs with Monty and Avery Lipman. And, you know, I'm from Atlanta. Like, Benny Hanna's is a big deal. So going to oh, B- yeah. Mr. Childs yeah. is like, yeah. you know, and, you know, home, we're going to Atlantic Country Club. It just felt luxurious yep, being at yep, Atlantic. Yep. And then we ended the day at Jive Records. Jive Records, we get off the elevator. Boom. Hundreds of people wearing Travis Porter shirts, posters all across the walls. Like, they're covering up Britney Spears. Did they and, prep, prep for y'all? Oh, yeah. Like, uh, they, they buttered you up. They're courting yeah, us. that's they, how it works, yeah. So so we go in, boom, one of the record label execs comes over and whispers in my ear and says, we want to give you two million. <laughs> and I was set in my mind. I was like, this is it. This is who we're going to sign with. Yeah. You know, I, I've always kind of, like, had this little, like, social anxiety of going to clubs. Like, I, I don't like going out, like, to nightclubs. So... You know, after that day, I'm just going to go back to the hotel and uh, the fellas are going to go out to the club with one of the universal a and mm. I'm in the shower and I see my phone ringing. And I'm like, who could this be? I look out the shower curtain and it says Diddy. And I'm like, oh Lord, I don't want to talk to Diddy. Like, I don't feel like getting cussed out right now. He calls again. And he calls again. Oh, no. And he calls again. Ah, shit. So I finally get out of the shower, and I'm, like, bracing for impact. I'm, like, going to call him. He answers the phone. Charlie, you're going to come to my city and not show me the respect to meet with me? I'm, like, I was upfront and honest with you. Like, we weren't interested in signing the bad boy. And he's just giving it to me. He said, show me the respect. I'm sending a car to your hotel right now. Bring the fellas over to... I'm like... Did he's yelling at you like that? Yelling at me. What's it like to get a call from... (laughs) Was he P. Diddy at the time? He did. So what's it like at 19 to get a call from P. Diddy and then have that call him just be reaming your asshole? It was tough because, I mean, in one aspect, I'm trying to be a good manager and I'm trying to do what's right for my client. You should have cussed him out back. I can't cuss Diddy out. You uh, shut the fuck <laughs> up. Why does what managers do? Haven't you seen Entourage? Ari Gold? He took a paintball gun to the office and shot people up. I think it's because he's managing like the biggest star in the world at the time. Like he's on the come up. He's got to be respectful of the gods. I'm 19 mm. years yeah. old. And he is saying, a but God. clearly you're on Savage Life. Anyways, go on. So, so did, did he send you a car? I wouldn't let him. He he wore me down. He said, just bring the fellas over before y'all go to the club with Imran from Universal. And I was like, all right, cool. Because I mean, who doesn't want to go to Diddy's penthouse? Like, it's still yeah. cool life yeah, experience. Yeah. So we go over, I give the fellas a little pep talk. Look, we're not signing to Diddy. I don't care how cool this is. We're not signing to Diddy. Go up the elevator, knock on the door. And the, the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life answers the door. <laughs> it was Cassie. Like, I'm draw- I'm like on the oh, floor. Shit. Like, my mouth is... Hey, wait, who is it? Cassie. I'm, 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 I'm going to date myself here. Stunning, bro. Cassie? Oh, it was his girlfriend for like yeah. nine years. You know oh, okay. Cassie. 
You know Cass. Maybe. You'll uh, know her if he's uh, here. I'm 24. I suck. But <laughs> please continue. So, like, we go into the apartment. Cassie is dragging, like, a, a, a four-foot bottle of Moet across the living room. Y'all want a drink? And it's just like, Diddy comes out. And he says, Charlie, let me take the fellas to the club tonight. And he already knew. I told him they're going with Universal. And I'm like, nah, you can't go to the club. They're already going with Universal. I'm a man of my word. Yeah, I don't want to disrespect yeah. them. He says, Charlie, let, let me talk to you in the hallway. I'm like, oh, I'm about to go to timeout. <laughs> <laughs> he, he takes me, puts his arm around me. He's like, Charlie, it's going to be okay. It'll help your negotiations. Trust me. And I'm like, okay, okay. Yeah, you know, you can take the fellas to the club. Universal got pissed at me. Of course. <laughs> it was, you stabbed them in the back. This is why you're getting fired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Long story short, we ended up uh, deciding to go with Jive Records. Okay. And we had, we had these songs going, flying up the charts. And then the record contract was taking so long to get closed with the attorneys going back and forth, doing the fine deals. And it was a really big deal at the time in music. It was still two mil? Oh, it was two mil. So it, it, going to the club with P. Diddy did not indeed help the negotiation? It, it, it didn't hurt it. It didn't hurt oh. it. it. We survived. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but our song started falling at radio during these negotiation periods of just those fine little points on the contract. Mm. I get a call from the record label saying, we got word from the higher ups. The contract is, is too fat. The executives want to pull out of the deal completely. And I'm like being hounded by the group and their parents. Where's the money? Where's the money? Everybody's expecting a $2 million check. And I've done all this negotiation. I've taken records independently, top 20 in the country from driving to every radio station. I've pissed off every other record label to pick this one. And now they're pulling out of the deal. <sighs> CEO Charlie is having a rough time here. <laughs> Should have gone to the club with the Universal, man. <laughs> Just, yeah, I don't know anything, but... <laughs> so they pulled out of the deal. <clears throat> we were in this little chocolate factory. Like, all the money ran out. Was it Willie's? No, it was... Um, it was this Wait a second. Ch a boy named Charlie was in a chocolate factory. What the swear, fuck is going on I here? I swear right to God. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, what? my God. Are you, did you just so, start making shit up? So, like, right, I went through half this story. Now Charlie's at the chocolate factory. We, we had this golden ticket. A girl licked the wall. She turned into a fucking blueberry. Pretty like, much. Where's this going to end? Bro? Pretty much. So there was this little house thing for rent that was a commercial chocolate factory. It was like a small little house. I was like, this would make a perfect little studio. It's something we could afford, like $600 a month. And there was this kid who was our engineer and I gave him a job. He was homeless at the time. And he was like mixing records for me for $50 a pop. And I said, you know what? I'll give you a job. Just be our engineer. One day he brought a keyboard to the little chocolate factory studio. And we're like laughing at him. You know, you ever had like a new employee and you just kind of like pick on him a little bit? Yeah. Was he good though? Oh, well, we, we don't know. Like, okay, okay. You were just laughing that he brought a keyboard. Like, what do you got a keyboard for? Because okay. it was a big keyboard. Yeah. It wasn't a little MIDI keyboard. It was the big, like, 88 keys. Mm. And we're like, what do you got a keyboard for? He was like, you know, I make, I make beats. And I'm like, man, you can't make a beat. <laughs> First beat he made. Make it rain, bitch. Make it, oh, make no it way. rain, bitch. Second beat he made. Bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. Both. Top 10 records in the country. Wow. Then he made A Ladies, number two song in the country. Then he went from being homeless to making these top 20 records, top 10 records, top five records in the country to when he went on and discovered Iggy Azalea and Post Malone and signed wow. both of them. What's his name? Marcus First. Good job, First. You've heard his beats. Good job, First. Wow. Yeah, he's a huge Damn. producer in the industry, and he was just sleeping on the couch. One of the most inspirational stories. And, you know, that's what took my career to the next level. It was no looking back after that. Jive Records came back, signed us for the contract, and uh, my career took off. Like, then discovered 2 chains, and I was like, it's time to grow the management company. Mm. And there was this artist named Titty Boy. And Sorry, what? His, Titty his, boy. his name Two was Chains. Titty. Two yeah. Chains. His name yeah. before his name was Two Chains was named Titty Boy. Yeah, I mean, it's still it. How you spell that? T I T Y B O I. I would have said Titty Boy. Tidy. That's Titty Boy. <laughs> no, like he's so, clean. So, so in <laughs> the Tidy Boy. Just, tidy boy. <laughs> in the South, in the South, like his family's from Lagrange, Georgia. My family's from Lagrange, Georgia. It's the country, 
If you're a titty boy, it means you're a mama's boy. It's like oh. some southern. Yeah. So that's what his mom like you still always breastfeed called at him, sixteen, basically. Gotcha. So he um he signed a ludicrous for ten years. I come along. I knew he was a star. Me and my business partners taken out. Like we like saw him. We were at a music video shoot with Travis Porter and Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne had a music video shoot with with Titty Boy, and when he walked in the room, it was just magnificent. Like, was he wearing any chains at this point? He was wearing so many chains you couldn't see his neck. <laughs> did he like, have a Did he have a master's degree yet? He never had a master's degree, but he definitely graduated with Yo, a psychology he's a degree. He's a smart man. I heard he's a genius. He's he a is. smart man. Dude. Absolutely. I love watching him argue with the newscasters mm-hmm. when he Nancy got in that Grace. fight with watching it. Yeah, with mm-hmm. Nancy Grace about the weed shit. Absolutely. I love Two Chains, bro. Yeah, oh, he yeah. does. He's I'm a big a huge, he's, fan. He's one of my favorite yeah. rappers for he, sure. He's, he's, he's artful. So with you're it. saying he was wearing mm-hmm. a lot of chains? Wearing a lot of chains. I mean, when he walked in the room, <laughs> it was like looking at an Egyptian pharaoh. Uh, and in Atlanta, I feel like that when I look at Jake Paul. It's my brother. Yeah. Like he he like he's a YouTuber. I don't know why he's wearing so many chains. Mm. Anyways. <laughs> Atlanta. <laughs> We're in Atlanta and we always knew Titty Boy because he was signed to Ludacris. He was an Atlanta legend. And he had a big song, Go and Get Your Money, Little Duffel Bag Boy. Oh, yeah. He had a big <laughs> song classic, at one point. Classic. And it had, Huge. you know, it had kind of fallen off. And then that's when we entered his life. And we approached Ludacris and, you know, his management team. And we were like, we want to get him out of the contract. We want to take him solo. What was it? Play a circle? Play a circle. Yeah. yeah. See, dude. you know your stuff, brother. Bro, that's a classic. That was one of my favorite fucking songs ever. Like, I still rock that shit. Mm-hmm. That was a classic. Classic. Yeah. And we took them solo, man, and and you know our careers took off. We won Grammys, world tours, and you know the bigger the bigger my business got, the bigger I got. I got over three hundred pounds. Yeah. So talk. So talk about literally that a little the, bit. Yeah. You got bigger physically. Yeah. Absolutely. What was the correlation there? Just uh, no time to work out. You. Pay- no, nah, man. It was. It was. I would diet and work out every day, but business was a trap. Remember when I was young and I like. Buried my childhood dream of being an athlete, mm-hmm. and I decided to be a businessman. Mm-hmm. It was like a track jump that led me into a trap of, okay, stress of business leads to food. For some, for some people, yeah. obviously. Yeah, yeah, Does yeah. it for you? It did at one point. It's called emotional. It can be called emotional eating. And so, so I think he's leading me to preface here. Like, I, I used to weigh over 300, almost 300 pounds myself. Mm. And I lost about a hundred pounds too. So I, I, bro, I fuck with your journey a lot. And I like, I get it. Um, but I, I did that too. I ate out of stress a lot too. And I also just thoroughly enjoyed eating. Mm -hmm. Like I just loved eating. Like what was your, what was your go-to like? Cheesecake. Mm. Mm. Cheesecake. Anything sweet. Any any you type any type of cheesecake? Yeah, usually with the little strawberry, you know, mm-hmm. little mm-hmm. Strawberry. strawberry drizzle. Yep. I wasn't big on the chocolate cheesecake. More the you know. Mine strawberry. mine was fried shit, bro. Fried. I loved like <clears throat> hash browns. Mm-hmm. What like did the you Burger Waffle King hash? Oh my god! What did you end up getting up to? Three o three o five. My heaviest weight. Three o five. And then I remember I was I was at Two Chains' house. He had just bought a house in L. A. And I was like, you know, I'll go break it in for you. You know, like I'm staying there, you know, LA weather is nice compared to Atlanta. And uh, one morning I woke up and the room just was spinning and I couldn't stop the room from spinning. I was like, oh man, this can't be good. And after about 45 seconds, which felt like an hour, I was able to get it to stop. I was getting out of bed, putting on my shoes, went to go grab my socks and pass out. And come to find out, I was diagnosed with a brain tumor. And it was right around the time the Grammys were coming up and we found out we won a Grammy with Chance the Rapper, no problem. You don't want no problem, you want no problem with me. And that was our Grammy song. And it was the day of the Grammys that I realized music, money, success, that life I had created for myself at the age of eight and set on this path meant nothing to me. And I'm looking at my life like a, like a movie. Like it was a bad movie. Like it, it would have like a terrible Rotten Tomatoes score. Like I'm like, that can't be it. There has to be more <laughs> oh, yeah, to the yeah. movie. I can't have a bad movie be my life. Like this guy just woke up, decided to make money and dies. Uh-uh. That can't be it. What, and I asked myself, what was my dream? What was my truest dream? And I would sit on the beach with my notebooks. And I've got 
every single notebook, and we'll get into that in a second, I would, I would always write my dreams in my notebook. And I went back to that, I want to be an athlete. And it makes no sense, 300 pound man, to go to his business partners and his artists at the age of 28 and say, I want to retire and I'm going to become an athlete. It's a big statement. I'm not sure. I'm trying to imagine if someone were to say that to me, given the situation, because how much money had you made? You were a multimillionaire. Yeah, we were doing about 15 million a year. So it sounds like you have everything you'd ever want. You're saying it'd get a the movie would get a bad Rotten Tomatoes score, but I, I feel like I'd have to disagree. The movie sounds like a fucking movie. It sounds like a rock star lifestyle. Yeah, but I guess he's saying not for his not for his audience. It was, I kept saying this statement over and over in my head. My story isn't over yet, comma. Mm. Made, I made sure I emphasized the comma because a period means it's end. Comma means it keeps going. And I just kept saying, my story isn't over yet. This can't be it. I knew in my heart. See, I believe our dreams are a lot like, like the calculator app on your phone. You didn't download it. It was just already there. Mm -hmm. And I had a dream that was in me that makes no sense to anybody in society, but it made sense to me. I have to be an athlete. And when I went to 2 Chains, I said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to retire and I'm going to be an athlete. He said, I don't understand. And I told him these words. I said, this isn't my practice life. This is my only one. Wow. And he said, okay, I get it. I get it. And he said, well, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to do an Ironman. You would just immediately go to one of the hardest races <clears throat> the hardest. in the world? It was the goal. For those of you who do not know, an Ironman, which Spencer actually ran. He's about mm -hmm. to do another one. 2.4 mile swim. Hundred followed by a hundred twelve mile, mile hundred twelve yep. mile bike, mm -hmm. followed by a marathon. Full marathon. Yep. That's right. Took me sixteen hours. He'll be way faster than me. Sixteen hours, forty one minutes. Came in second to last place. I did it in New Zealand, and I was within minutes of being disqualified on every single portion of it. And if you get disqualified, like say during the bike portion, you get disqualified. They kick you up. I go all the way to New Zealand. I put everything on the line to do this. And I'm within minutes and I'm pushing against a 20, 30 mile an hour headwind. And I, I finished and I was over still technically like overweight when I did it. How much did you weigh when you did it? I probably weighed like 205. Oh, you had, so you'd already mm. lost like 100 I had pounds. lost quite a how, bit of weight. How long did that journey take you? That, that 10 months. Pounds? Yeah. 10 months. Of, of, of Iron Man training? Iron Man training all in. And what was the... <clears throat> These cutoffs, by the way, are not slow. Right. Like 16 hours. Like that's still... Like that's... What did you guys? I thought you got like 12. Tw yeah, 12. I was just under 13. So I like... That's a great time. That, I mean, still 16 Bro. hours though. So much respect. That's an amazing what, time. So what were, what were like your, just for like anyone out there, because I've <clears throat> heard from some people that they're looking for kind of tips and, you know, ideas for how to get that weight loss journey started. Like what were, what was some of that like for you? Like, what did you do to, cause you didn't miraculously go from 305 to 205 Ironman status. Bro. Like, what did you do? Bro, this is the problem, bro. Like, we got the odds stacked against us. Like, people, like, in this country, some people have good genetics. Most of us don't. The number is 7 out of 10 are overweight or obese in this country. Wow. Like, 70%. Yo, that's crazy. Oh, hey, what's what's obese though? Do you know? They're a little. It's they're 20, like harsh with that yeah. term. Yeah, <laughs> it's a it's or, a, depends on your. It's the BMI. BMI. It's your BMI. My rating. Uh, according 20. to the BMI, I think like Jake is obese. Nah, it's not. It's no, not. he might be considered overweight. overweight obese yeah. is like. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So what is it? Twenty percent body fat. Yeah, but just just next time you're on an airplane, just look like anywhere you go, like it's it's crazy. For the real. numbers. Yeah, I mean, life expectancy in this country the most advanced country in the world has dropped two years in a row yeah. like it's crazy and heart disease is now number one number one and if heart disease doesn't get you it's going to be cancer and cancer comes from the food too so it's like the food is going to kill you of heart disease or it's going to kill you of cancer like i come from hip-hop i had one of my artists he was he was shot and killed and we got demonized by the media like i'm on the news all the time in atlanta like oh uh, another shooting at you know, street exec studios, like there was a lot of violence. And I thought to myself like, okay, yeah, like there's a lot of violence in hip hop, but I did a Google search. I said, how many people die of gun deaths every year? I know it's way too many, but it's 22,000. 
I'm like, that's a lot. That's a lot. You know, we got a we got a real taste of that. Like I've been shot at. Did you, you know? did you have to carry a piece in Atlanta? I would never, I'm, I believe a lot in the law of attraction. And I believe, and actually Snoop Dogg says this too. If you have guns around, it brings more. It brings yeah. it. Like yeah. Snoop Dogg is like, when he let go of the gun, the trouble stopped. Finally. Wow. So so wow. I said, I never want to shoot a gun. Like I never even like, I don't drink or smoke either. Like I'm, I, my whole life, I've never. Your whole life? Yeah, my whole life. You've you never been drunk? No, nah, man. I was addicted to food, bro. Like wow. I had my addiction and then I just transferred that to my addiction for like athletics. Yes. So, do, you know? so do you have yes. an addictive personality? I would say so, but I think we all do. I don't, I don't, I don't think know, that's man. unique. I think people are addicted to like Xbox. Something. Like Everybody's addicted. Yeah. You know, um, social media. I think we're all, I think we're trained to be that way. Maybe. I mean, you, you do an, a phenomenal job of rerouting what you like you're targeting essentially what you want to go after and, and applying what you have inherently innately in you. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I don't want to skip around your question. Yeah, with well, how, I, how did you do it? Like, how B did you do it? I looked up the BMI and 30 it's 30 and higher percent body mass, uh, uh body fat yeah. is considered yeah. obese. Yeah. And so like, like, but I think at the end there, he kind of started to talk about what, what I was looking for was, which was he transferred his addiction. So like the way I lost weight was I fell in love with cycling mm -hmm. and it was all I wanted to do, bro. Mm -hmm. Like every day I woke up, I'm like, what do I have to do right now to get on the bike? Like what are the, what are the obstacles I got to clear through? Do I got to work? Do I got to do this shit so I can get back on the bike? Cause that's all I want to do. That's it. And once I fell in love with that shit and started riding 25, 30, 40, 50 mm -hmm. miles a day, mm -hmm. Then I found out, yo, when I don't eat hash browns, mm -hmm. I could ride faster. Mm -hmm. And then I started getting mm -hmm. losing weight on the bike, but not eating hash browns. Before you knew it, shit just started to drop. So when I tell people from my my journey, the first thing you got to look for is a cardio exercise that makes you happy. Yeah, because it might not be running, it might not be on the treadmill, it might not be on the elliptical, whatever it is. Find something that makes you happy: soccer, boxing, basketball, cycling, whatever the fuck it is. Yep. And then just for me, it's boxing, it. dude. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I would say, I'll say the thing that probably changed my, my life more than the exercise was like a simple concept. Like I got to have things like boiled down very simply mm -hmm. for me. And I asked myself a question. I said, if I'm dying and you are what you eat, is what I'm eating dead or alive? I just said, is what I'm eating dead or alive? And I would look at like different foods and it's not just meat. Like it could be like a cliff bar. Like it can sit on the shelf for five years. Mm -hmm. That's dead. Like I need something like, say we we're to take like a, a, a instrument that would read energy coming off of something, right? And you, you put it on a, you put it on a, like a, 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 an orange, like the energy is radiating, mm -hmm. you know? And then I put it on like, a, 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 you know, ground beef. It's like, oh, it's a little bit less. You know, it's like when I started eating this living higher frequency foods, my, uh, when I walked in here, y'all said, what are you, 21? Yeah. You look young. Yeah. Like, Sir, I'm you, not you, I you used to look old. You pulled some age reversal. Can you pull up a photo? Yeah, like. A little comparison? Like, how old are you? I'm 31. You know, but I. Yeah, I you went backwards, bro. You pulled a little Benjamin Button. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> My man's Benjamin Button every, so uh, buttoning down, everyone. Go down. Okay. Like, that's just like Damn, recently. Bro. Scroll, scroll, scroll. There's like a picture of when I was really big. Should I enhance the speed of this scroll? Um, I can scroll pretty fast if you want to see. He's a, he's a good scroller. You are. <laughs> Holy shit, you're flying. Oh, oh, oh go up I'm a little quick. bit. Go up a little bit. Right there. Boom. That's this me one? on the left. I was I was probably 20 in that picture on the left. You were 20? Yeah. Whoa. Oh my God, dude. Wow. You've added... <clears throat> uh, you haven't even added a year to You that look like photo. a really big Paul Wall. In that, you remember That's Paul my Wall? boy, yeah, man. Dude. Shout out Paul Wall. Wow. That's a fly-ass suit you got there, too. That's 2 chains' wedding right there. That's two changes wedding right there. So, so when I started eating these living foods, like crazy stuff started happening in my life. Not just the weight loss. What's a living food? Living food. Is this like just you like you just said, vegan so, switch? So, well, yeah, I went vegan. I don't impose veganism on any anybody, but I definitely will impose eat more living food because, like, I was noticing, like, I would do like a lot of ketogenic diets my whole life. So I was eating all meat. You know, like I'm eating nothing living and I'm like wondering why I'm dying. Like if I'm not eating anything that has this living frequency, how am I going <clears> to <throat> be alive? Yeah. You know, a protein bar, an energy bar, that's not real energy. Mm. 
There's no energy to it. It's dead. <laughs> it will sit there for six years and be perfectly fine on the shelf. That's dead bar. So it's like when I went, when I changed my, my frequency with the food I ate, this crazy stuff. Hey, Wes, pull, pull over those box of notebooks. This is something I've been doing for years. Oh, and yeah. the craziest stuff. Got started a, happening in my life. Giant would, box you, of would you say it? Would you say a Twinkie has the lowest life uh, or the lowest life energy? They still sell those, bro. So Twinkies will last how like for some crazy amount of time. So if there's like a nuclear blast, I saved one when they were discontinued. Yeah, you just, could, I you stuck could it in eat, my if, freezer. If, if there's nuclear blast, you could eat it. Holy eat shit! It. So what, now what is this? So my whole life, like I didn't know what I was doing when I would write down my dreams, but everything I always asked for came true. Like I would ask for the craziest things. And these are notebooks from when I was a kid all the way up until now like this. I call this my quantum possibility. You know about this. This is my quantum possibility notebooks. Like I study quantum physics now because when I started changing my frequency, crazy stuff started happening. And I was scared to talk to people about it because I thought they would think I was weird. Like Charlie, like what's all this hocus pocus stuff? Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, like, you don't understand, like, I'm going to be a Nike athlete. Like, I'm going to be the face of Nike. And they're like, Charlie, like, what are you talking about? Like, you're like, you don't play any sports, but I would write stuff in my notebooks. This one is like super magical. Can you can you just flip through? I just want to see. I mean, you don't have to show Here, we'll go. the intricate details, but yeah, like, is we'll the whole thing up. filled? Oh, all these are filled. Absolutely. So like this page right here, for example, I say on here, I will have real Nike commercials. I will be the face of Nike. Like the craziest things. I will be on CNN. I've been on CNN can you, can you four show the times. And, like, and are you just repeating it each day? I repeat, you I repeat a lot. You know, I definitely have my dreams that I repeat. Like there's one page in here. I was like, I'm going to be on the cover of a fitness magazine. And I'm like, not an athlete. I'm just saying I'm going to be an athlete. And then I'm on the cover of the biggest running publication <laughs> in the world. It's incredible. This is crazy. Runner's World Magazine. The Be biggest. Believe it or not, Charlie Rocket will change your life. Like everything I asked for. But the craziest thing I asked for Give in my quantum possibilities notebook was I will be a Nike athlete. And one day I made a, um, I said, I believe in the law of attraction. I said, I need to send out this energy. I said, what do Nike athletes have? They have Nike clothes on and they have Nike commercials. So I made a fan-made Nike commercial. I, I just yeah. watched that. It's awesome. It blew Thank you, up. Man. It's Thank awesome. You. It blew up. It got millions of views. Where did it, that blow up? Was it Facebook? Facebook. Yeah. yeah. It, and three days after we put it out, Nike calls me. Let's go. And Let's all my go. friends that told me I was crazy. I know. I love when, you're, <laughs> when your goals sound so stupid to people and then, and then they happen. That's the best feeling ever. Absolutely. Like, I believe, like, there's this thing called the hero's journey, Joseph Campbell. And every hero, no matter if it's, you know, you know Batman or Katniss Everdeen or Frodo, they're mm. all superheroes. And they all have the same stories. And they're called on a crazy journey. I'm going to be an athlete. It's scary. You got to leave your whole business. Like, there's something somebody's challenged you with before. Something like you, and you're like, I don't know. And But when you go and do it, and then it's really, when you go out into the world and you do that big, bold, crazy thing. It's like, oh shit. <laughs> it's, it's like nobody believes you're all by yourself. Yeah. And there's this like valley of disappointment where it doesn't look like anything's happening, but that superhero keeps his faith through it. And then like an outside force comes like a dragon tries to come and you got to slay the dragon, but we really got to slay something inside of ourselves. It's really something we're finding inside of ourselves to overcome that dragon. Every movie is this way. And then boom, that's when it happens. And that's what happened with me. Nike mm -hmm. called me, said, we want to fly you up to Beaverton. You have inspired us to change the direction of where we're taking our market. Whoa. Now, wow. now, now listen. A billion dollar We walk company. in. The number one stock in the Dow 30 last year. Was Nike. Nike. Now, I walk <laughs> into this big conference room and there's pictures of me on the screens 
and they gave a presentation to me about me. I have employees walking up to me and say, they're treating you better than LeBron James. They said they must be up to something. Like they would have these huge, like they have this big theater on their campus where they would do their corporate. Like you have seen Steve Jobs like doing a mm-hmm. presentation. Mm-hmm. Like it's like the big boss on the stage and people would like, take pictures of the screen and like send it to me, Charlie, like they're up to something. I'm like, what the hell is Nike doing? Come to find out. I get a call and they said, Charlie, we've been working on something that you inspired us to do. And there was a big commercial that came out last year. Colin Kaepernick commercial. Yeah. Extremely. um, Controversial. Controversial. I would know. I'm a YouTuber. <laughs> controversial. And and what they decided to do was to take athletes who had crazy dreams like me, mm-hmm. and they featured me in that commercial. They even named that commercial. So when they gave me this astronaut backpack, I made a fan-made Nike commercial. They said, Charlie, like, show everybody what we gave you. And I was like, all right, I'm going to make a film. I'm a filmmaker. I'm going to make a film about it. And I titled the film Dream Crazy. That was the tagline in the video. That's what they named the Colin Kaepernick wow. commercial. Wow. Yes. Wow. So it was. Yo, it this was, is crazy. We were able to move. Oh my God. All my friends, all my family. I told them I would be a Nike athlete. In that same notebook, I wrote down, I'm going to be in a commercial with LeBron James and Serena Williams. Wait, so what? Bef- they were in that commercial before. Bef- this before was a, a you year, even shot your year, year and a half before I shot. Wow! My, oh, like you oh, name okay. dropped. Oh, pff, LBJ and Serena Williams. Let me explain to you quantum Damn, physics, bro. bro. Please, because right. you're onto something. This is this I, is I, how I think been, we can all agree you're onto something. I don't know if you're from this planet. That's what I'm, I'm looking bro, at you. I'm trying I'm to not, find out if you're an alien. Bro, check this out. You speak of alien, bro. Look at the shoes, moon boots. He, that's what I'm he's saying. Not, he's not bro, from you here. Just, you just bro, came off the proof. lunar uh, landing eclipse. That's my, proof. My boy Wes said to me earlier, we were at Starbucks getting high on coffee. He said, Charlie, we're from, we're from the future mm. and we're coming back mm. to talk to Logan about what we saw. Let's go. So tell let me, me what you saw, man. I'm going to tell you about, <laughs> tell quantum, me about quantum physics. physics. <laughs> All right. This is how quantum physics works. It's real simple. I'll break this down in the simplest terms. It all started with a test where they took an atomic particle. You would think of an atomic particle like a rock. That's what they thought. They had this wall with two slits in it. They shot the rock at the wall and it went through both holes. Mm -hmm. How can a rock be in two places at the same time? Scared everybody. Spooked Einstein out. Einstein's technical term for this was spooky. He didn't like it. It confused the whole traditional physics community. This is early 1900s. They come to find out in this test that atomic particle, which every one of us are made of, this table, me, you, this microphone, every single thing is made up of atomic particles. It's not a rock. It's a vibration. Every atomic particle is a wave. Now, if something is a wave, can it go through both holes <clears throat> at the same time? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Imagine this being a pond. You drop a rock. That wave goes through both holes. Well, that changes the reality of everything. Hold on. All of us are vibrations? This is crazy. So we can be at two places at the same time. When I learn this, if I am atomic particle, and Nike is one, then that means I'm connected to my dreams. We're not separate. I'm already connected. Every single thing that I write in this book, I say, it's already done. Time hasn't caught up yet. I'm already connected to everything I want. Every single thing I imagine. When I wake up in the morning, I log into a different type of Instagram. Like there's Instagram, where we like look at pictures and we say, I like it. I log into this Instagram in my head and I'm like, I see all these pictures in my life of what makes sense to me. And I believe there's some innate like knowledge of, I know my future. Like I always knew I was going to be an athlete. I already knew it. And I like the picture and then boom, 
cover of Runner's World magazine. Boom, Nike athlete. Boom, commercials with LeBron and Serena. All these crazy journeys that I want to go on. I believe in it so big and I dream so crazy. It comes true every time. Bro, I'm undefeated, bro. I said I wanted Oprah to walk into my life. Literally. Her producer of 25 years walked straight in. Like I'm talking about, I said to my boy, George, I said, George, like I want to work with Oprah. Two minutes later, this lady walks past. Her name is Ann. She comes over. She, George's like, Charlie, tell her your story. I said, oh, this is my story. You know, my life story. This before I had any videos out. No, no connections, no nothing. She starts writing things down. I said, what you writing down? She said, oh, I'm meeting with Oprah's producer in 20 minutes. Boom, Oprah's producer produced my whole Bike Across America wow. tour. Everything I've done with the media, all the givebacks. I always do givebacks. So this time, last year, two days ago, I started my bike ride across America. I was like, I want to do something crazy. Just finished the Ironman. I was like, I want to do something crazy, but I don't want it to be about me. I wanted to do something bigger than me. The Ironman was about me. But I said, uh-uh, I'm going to bike across America, and I'm going to make people's dreams come true everywhere I go. I bought this big old tour bus. And what do most people do if they buy a tour bus? They put their face on the side. I was like, uh-uh. I'm calling this the Dream Machine Tour Bus. And I made it this huge canvas painted like the, the, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And I have now on that tour bus over 20,000 people's dreams. I believe in writing dreams down. Mm -hmm. Everybody would write their dreams. Everybody from the Duke Blue Devil, Zion, everybody has put their dreams on this tour bus as I'm biking across America. I'm jumping out of trash can. I'm, there's a dumpster. So I wanted to give a car to this girl who works at Starbucks. She was put up for adoption, ended up homeless, worked her way all the way through high school, going off to college, paying for college wow. by herself. Goes to college, doesn't have a way to get to work. So she's got like some financial problems. So I wanted to give her a car. She has no idea. She works at Starbucks. She's a Starbucks barista. Starbucks told me initially I could film in there. Then about 20 minutes before, they said, no, nah, they higher up said, you can't, you can't do this in here. So I said, okay, can I film outside? They were like, yeah. I said, okay, just have her take out the trash. I hide in a dumpster. She comes to take out the trash, hop out the dumpster, car pulls up, her teacher's family, everybody was hiding behind trees and cars, surprise her with the car, makes national news, seeing it, ABC, everybody, like we're doing these givebacks. In Atlanta, there was a girl who had um, an amputated leg and they didn't have the money to afford one of the prosthetics you can run in. It was just her dream to be able to run again beautiful girl named Amira. I said, you know what? This is what we're going to do. We're going to give her a leg. We're going to make running in Atlanta cool. You've never seen people be in a frenzy over running shoes, ever. People go in a frenzy over, you know, Jordans, Yeezys, Lines, you know, but you've never seen people go in a frenzy over running shoes. So what did I do? I bought 305 pairs of off-white shoes, all running shoes. We spent like $280,000. Wow. We gave away 305 pairs of shoes in a scavenger hunt in Atlanta. 305 to, to resemble my, my largest weight. Mm -hmm. Cool. We had the city of Atlanta in a frenzy. I had 150 people in a frenzy. 4,000 actually showed up. 151 shoes on one day. And Amira was there. She thought she was just coming to like some little motivational speaking event. She didn't realize that I gathered all these people there to go on our first run with her. So uh, we surprised her with the doctors, the, the, the cheetah running leg, and boom, everybody's there to win their shoes. The doctors hook her up, boom, and we all went on a run with her. So how, you have all these dreams, you write them out. Mm -hmm. Wait, I know. hold on, hold on a second, bro. Acknowledge that story, just for one second. I'm, I'm like, that's tell me how to impulsive. No, I'm just, All right, I'm bro? just like, yo, soak that in for one second. I, I, that's incredible that I have been sitting here listening to you. I, this is the longest I haven't talked in my entire life. I'm dead serious, bro. I, uh, I did not expect to come in here today and be inspired. I just knew we had a six o'clock podcast. I didn't really know what to expect. I am extremely like, I don't even really, I, I'm shook, bro. I also, I'm, I don't know what I'm to I'm say, man. I'm shook, bro. Like, like, the stuff that you were just saying, yeah, like, Mike was, was in. resonating with me 
on a level that like had me feeling like, yo, wow, dude, we have to do better. Like, like, bro, let me I tell you, you've been, open. Tell you, you've like, been opening up to something. I felt it, bro. That right there, bro. Like I was thinking myself, I'm like, let me tell you, where bro. does, where gotta, does this kid interrupt. come from? I got to like, interrupt you, bro. You just said something. And that's my whole purpose in this world. I come from hip hop. There was a lot of negativity. When I, when I got out, I was like, I got to make up. Like, we would always do good things. We'd always do charity stuff. It was always overlooked. I'm catching up in everything that I missed out on all those years. These journeys, that bike ride across America, that helping people, bro, it touched so many lives. Like, real lives. There was a teacher... She had breast cancer. The school had a strike in Arizona. I'm biking into the school district. They were just on strike. Teachers not getting paid. She has breast cancer. She's having chemotherapy. She can't pay her mortgage. She, the schools can't, like, it's a terrible situation. She missed one day of school through all her cancer and chemo. She refused to miss school. We paid off her mortgage completely, $90,000. We paid off her medical bills, $60,000. And we bought her a minivan so she could go visit her family because she didn't have a car. Who's funding all this? Bro, we make phone calls. Like, I've got to challenge everybody to do what's right. Like, if there's a corporation, look, there's a teacher here who's got help. Like, come on, let's do what's right. Like, I don't have that much money to give away. I'm not that wealthy, you know, but here's somebody who is. And it's like, boom, I'm just, I'm just challenging, using my resources. And everybody gets so much out of it. When you do what's right and make something a little bit bigger than ourselves, I'm like, oh, I done found the formula for my life. I'm going to be good for life if I keep making sure everybody's dreams come true. What, what felt better for you <clears throat> the day that you got the first time you ever saw seven figures in your bank account? Or putting that leg on that girl or or jumping out of the trash can Man, with a car for... There's a new type of millionaire, bro. There's a new type. Bro, I've had to make a million dollars. It's cool. Like, seeing that second comment, that's cool. But when I retired, I'm like, I'm going to be a new type of millionaire. I'm going to, like, with my hands, not like just the internet, with my hands, I'm going to change a million people's lives. And that's what leads me into my next journey. Like, I can't stop. Like, I don't want to just come onto a, a podcast and talk about my last play. Like, mm -mm. like we got to keep going. My next journey is going to be maybe the craziest I've ever done. And in this country, there's a big problem with what's going on with the veterans. Bro, it's crazy. I'm biking across America. I meet this veteran. He can't even get a job because they won't let him get a job because he'll receive his disability. But his disability isn't even enough money. He's like volunteering at a trailer park, like cleaning up, like the raking the rocks, like the little rocks on the trailer park. And he's big, like if he gets a, they can't, won't let him get a job. Boom. It's terrible what's going on. The mental health issues are crazy. So many are committing suicide every day. And I'm like, I got to do a journey for this. This is it. Like, I got to affect this in a major way. I can't little boy this. This is big time. Maybe you want to do something with me. Bro, how about this? How about this? One of the craziest feats. You're an athlete. I can't wait to look like you. I'm still working on it. I want to be on the cover of Men's Health magazine. Let's me and you try to pass the Navy SEAL test. <laughs> We're talking about mud. We're talking about dark rivers. We're talking about crazy stuff. And we do the craziest thing to give back and bring awareness what's going on here, but to also do something that's a life trophy. Navy SEAL test is one of the craziest things. Like that's Iron Man, crazy, that's cool. But we're talking about mental toughness. And there's two different types of mental toughness. See, in this country, everybody is getting beat down like mental illness. It's almost like it's almost like the Navy SEAL test. It's tough. People are living that in their lives. And there's two philosophies. In the Western world where we live, people are like, nah, you got to be tougher. Like, you got to be tougher to like, 
But in the Eastern, in the Eastern countries like China, it, they look within. They get into the meditation. They find within. So I'm like, it's mental toughness and this mental health. I was like, what if I compared the Eastern philosophies of mental toughness, like Mr. Miyagi style, like I wore this shirt, Bruce Lee, like, like what if I go to China and I like learn from like a Mr. Miyagi on mental toughness and come back to the West and I learn the mental toughness from like a Navy SEAL, like a David Goggins or an Iron Cowboy who did 50, iron, 50 yeah. Ironmans in 50 days type mental toughness. But we do all these crazy give backs. What you say, brother? Navy SEAL test. Um, first off, I'm down. <laughs> I'm down. Done. I think it's a fucking phenomenal idea. And I would love, I would love to do that with you. I'd be honored to do that with you. Um, that's going to be hard as fuck. I hope you know, but no problem. No problem. We'll work out together. It'll be great. I'm not scared of holding my breath underwater. Yes, I am. I have two fears in life. That's one of them. Yeah. Uh, He's a rock when he swims. Dark water. I like kill me. Sure. Kill me now, but we'll do it. Um, I brought, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm You're kind a little of speechless. I don't know I, what to like. Like in the first thing I said in my intro for you was he has got one of the most inspirational transformation stories, and like I saw it on a on a site and I read, but like hearing you talk, man, like you talk about vibrations. I feel like my skin is vibrating. It, it, I, I don't it, feel like in my body right now. That's the that's thing. No, that's quantum, brother. You're quantum. If you just said you're vibrating, then you're quantum. No, literally, my skin is like. I, off, I don't know. I can't describe it, but I could cry. I'm not gonna. I, I might. The, <laughs> the thing about it is like the his journey, like on paper, was which is what I expected coming in. Like weight loss, marathons, all that shit is great. The way you tell the story, the energy you have, and most importantly, the confidence you have in the way you talk about things that are going to happen in the future is. Uh, I don't know how to put it exactly. It's it's mind blowing. I want to I want to hit two things. One is one is real quick. Isn't there a statistic that your goals are more likely to be achieved if you write them down? What is that? It's um something it's some crazy number like 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 50, 40, 50 40, percent 40, 40 more. Something it's percent, something right? crazy. So, I mean, it's 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 evident in in that. Uh, box full of notebooks that you have that this is true. And I can relate to you there. This is also why I'm on like, I'm kind of just like sitting back and really enjoying listening to is because I can relate in high school. And I, I told, said this a thousand times, like I manifested this. Mm -hmm. I manifested my life. No and doubt. just like you said, man, I'd be writing stuff down and I didn't fucking know what it meant. I just knew I wanted it and could make it happen. Like, well, I didn't understand uh, why I couldn't do it. I could, even at Coachella, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this, and mm. it's gonna sound fucking stupid. Amazing. It's gonna sound so dumb, but I will, will repeat this when I'm performing at Coachella in X years. Come on, man. Yo, come on, man. I don't. I I was watching people perform, and I didn't understand why I couldn't be up there. It's not like I'm like a naturally born musician mm. or like artist or singer. Mm. I'm a creator, and I adapt, and I'm a chameleon. So, can I write something in that book? Come on, man. At the top. Write quantum possibilities. Okay. And then write write the dream. So one of the one of the questions I was gonna ask earlier, there's a lot of people who write their goals down. There's a lot of people who have these goals. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I really realized from the Iron Man is when you when you're done, you know the feeling when you cross that line mm -hmm. and you're going so far beyond the limit of what is humanly possible in Absolutely. your mind. There's a certain veil that's just lifted like you can see life clearly you're yes. like at the top of the mountain you're like whoa i get it yes and you can only get that feeling if you go you can't get it from drugs you you have to get it from something physical like that i feel like so many of us are living with this veil in front of us and so we have this this image of what we want our lives to be and mm -hmm. we almost become more comfortable with that image and that dream yes instead of taking the action so absolutely how did you take the action and and not just sit with that dream and feel good about it. It's for me, I do a couple things. These are my little life hacks. One, I say everything's gonna be easy. Like I'm in I'm in a um in a sweet green, eating a salad with a friend. And I haven't done the Iron Man yet. And he's like, he's like a a big, you know, like endurance athlete guy. And he's asking me, so Charlie, what advice do you want from me on the thing? I was like, I don't want any advice. 
I was like, that Iron Man's already done. Like, it's going to be easy. He's like, are you sure? Like, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm straight. Like, even when I met Rich Roll, like I did Rich Roll's podcast like a year ago. He's like, so Charlie, like, what advice can I give you? I was like, I don't need any advice. Like, it's easy. Iron Man's easy. So I'm in the salad shop. Somebody overhears me talking the way I'm talking. Big black dude, deep voice, looks like Morpheus. <laughs> he walks up to me. He says, you're very quantum. Oh. I said, I said, what does that mean? He said, I hate to interrupt. I never do this. But he said, I'm a quantum physicist. And he said, your whole life, you've been able to do some crazy things. He said, I could tell by the way you talk. This is how I define easy. Easy is if you know how to do something. For example, at one time, tying our shoe was hard. I remember I was like three years old. I was crying. I couldn't figure out the little mm -hmm. loop deep, you mm -hmm. know, like that was hard at one point. Mm -hmm. But once I knew how to do it, it was easy. Addition was hard at one time. Multiplication was hard. At, division was hard at one time. But once I did it, Oh, it's easy. Michael Phelps does this all the time. He plays out before his swims. He plays it out in his head. So he sees it. If I can see something, that Iron Man, I was already at the finish line long before I started. That's how my body was able to figure out how to do it. I said, it's easy. My body is going to believe what I tell it every time. You look at my Iron Man video, I'm dancing the whole way, like I'm smiling, I'm happy. Like it wasn't, it, there were some hard parts. It was easy. I'm telling you, like everything is easy. I'm living at the finish line. Becoming an Nike athlete, like you said, oh, you say it with confidence. It's like this Navy SEAL thing to me. Like, yeah, it's going to be challenging. It's easy. Let me ask you something. What's up? Because I've, I've heard this before. What's up? You, 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 I like the way you break it down. It's almost like from a, a futuristic point of view. Like I've done that and I now know how to do it. So it's easy. Mm -hmm. But I've sort of adopted quite the opposite mentality in that uh, for me, it's like it, I, I get more joy and I feel more accomplished. If in my head, I'm like, yo, this is tough mm -hmm. and I know it's going to be tough and this will be difficult for me. Mm -hmm. So bring it fucking on, motherfucker. That's right. And that's Bring a, it fucking that's up. Like, amazing, I'm, I'm up for the challenge. Absolutely. I know it's going to be hard. Right. But sometimes I'll say, you know, when you're like lifting weights, you're like, light work, mm -hmm. easy work. Right. But really, you're like bench, bre right. bench pressing 305. Right. But well, there's, a, there's, yeah. <laughs> there's a, I don't know, there's something that I get out of crossing so what that, you're that talking uh, about, mountain. What you're talking about is you're actually in the journey. Most people's problems is they don't know how to start. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. For example, mm -hmm. we're in high school. We hate going to the class that's hard. We love going to the class that's easy. That's how I start. If I said, oh, being an athlete is going to be hard. Oh, being a Nike athlete, I'm going to have to like try out for the G League and like try to like play basketball to get a Nike contract. But instead in my head, I'm saying it's easy. So I actually show up. Mm. I show mm. up. Where most people don't even show up because yeah. they're like, this is hard. Where you're at mentally is because you're already deep in it. And Got that's it. the right mentality Got to it. have. But to start, nobody's starting because they're saying this is going to be hard. And when you think of something is that hard at the beginning, you find reasons that are going to go wrong. Mm. And then you talk yourself out of it and, and you start. never even start. Yeah. So both I, are right. I've said this uh, to them, actually, and I'm not going to like dive into it crazy now. And I'm sure I'll say it again, but... I uh, sort of adopted this mentality recently um, about how powerful I think momentum is. Big Mo. Big Mo? Big Mo. You got, so you've already broke this down. Talk to me about it. Big Mo is the most valuable resource in the universe. What the fuck did I say to you boys? We're yeah. quantum. Yo, that's, I swear to God, I <laughs> verbatim, quantum. I said momentum is one of the most powerful. I said, momentum I is one of the most powerful it. forces in the universe. Fuck! Yo, that's it. crazy! I said that, and he just said that. We've never spoken before. <laughs> P equals MV. Momentum equals mass times velocity. I don't want to get too physics with it. I love it. But, but to, to break this down without, again, going too into it, is momentum... Sometimes the first thing you need to do is go to the gym. Mm -hmm. Go to the gym. If 
five days a week. Yep. Then eventually get the six. Fuck yep. and, that. And guess Go what? Go to the gym one day a one week. One day a week, for whatever it is. five minutes. One day a if week. If you're watching this and you haven't been to the gym, go to the gym for five minutes. But yo, guess what? Guess Start. what? Once that starts happening, you're going to want to eat cleaner. Yep. Because you're not going to want to put your work to waste. Yep. Oh my God, this is crazy. When can, I you, said, can you show that to the camera? What does the top of the page say? What do I want? What do I want? What does the bottom of the page say? I want momentum. That it's was everything. Everything. Mm -hmm. Once you're once you're in it, you're going, dude. A stone rolling down a hill is gonna keep rolling down a hill. Moment of inertia, baby. It's the most powerful it's thing. It's AP man. physics, baby. Mm. That's crazy, Charlie. Oh my God. So what do we got? What's the dream that you wrote down? Is that or is that for the book? I have no, a lot, I have Coachella. a lot of dreams. I said I will perform at Co Coachella, bro. Sounds these so are, stupid. These are, no, come on, man. This is what you say after you say that. It's already done. Time hasn't caught up yet. And it's easy. It's easy. <laughs> Everybody, I'm looking at a stage <laughs> and I'm like, that person's human just like me. Yeah. Yep. Just like me. It's already done. And I believe each one of us can have all sorts of crazy chapters in their life. I don't believe we're meant to have one chapter that's 4,000 pages. That book would suck to read. Mm -hmm. Like me, I said, I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Boom, chapter. I want to be a manager. I want to be a cameraman. I want to be, boom, chapter. I want to be a manager, chapter. I want to be an athlete, chapter. I want to be a Nike athlete, chapter. I want to be an uh, Ironman, chapter. I want to bike across America, chapter. I want to be as fit, as mentally tough as a Navy SEAL, Chapter, I want life trophies. I don't want one. I want a whole shelf of life trophies. We, I'm 31. Well, I'm only going to be on this earth for a little while. I don't say the words anything is possible. Do you know how limiting the word anything is? <sighs> That's one thing. Everything. Everything. What you're doing, boom, Coachella, easy. Easy. That frequency of easy changes everything everything. It's easy. You're there. I'll, I'll, I can't wait to ride the little go-kart and the golf cart in the back. But, oh, what? hey, he's about to go on. <laughs> I was just on his podcast. <laughs> yeah, he's about to go on. Oh, can't wait. One, one thing, uh, just being vulnerable for, for me, something I've ran into, and, you know, this is really inspiring me to think outside this. Um, I've had these moments where I manifest things that I want. Things are moving really quick. Things are going. But then there's other moments where like the comfortability in life comes in. Mm -hmm. And it's like you get to this benchmark and you're scared to get out of that. Mm -hmm. Like you have this comfortability that you've created. Mm -hmm. And like for me, it's my educational documentary. Mm -hmm. Like that has to get done. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't get done, I like I failed mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Because I know how important it is. But there's times where it's like, I have to sacrifice it to do other things, mm -hmm. you know? So uh, what would you say to, the, to, I know there's people out there like me that have that project or have that thing, but you have to sacrifice what you want to build something that somebody else wants. Absolutely. Or is that, you know, what's the balance you make, there? You make somebody else a millionaire, you're going to be a millionaire. I had to go make people's lives, dreams come true. I was a manager. A great manager is a great server. I was of servitude. My dreams, I had dreams. You think it was my dream to be a cameraman? Like, no, like, but I had to do that. Yeah, I didn't, it wasn't my dream to be a manager. I had to do that. So it's like, bro, you make somebody else's dream come true. You like this, boom, you have, you're of service. All the resources are going to come to you. And when the time's right, it's right. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I paid, I paid 12 years of my dues yeah. for other people, other people's lives and success. You know, it took me with them. But then when I walked away, like I walked away. I wasn't half in, half out. Like I didn't go chase my dream and like have two chains saying like, Charlie, why are you focused on all that running? Like, why aren't you doing your job? Like, like I did what was right, handed all my shares I say over. that sometimes. <laughs> yeah. This man runs nine hours a day in the mornings yeah. when we're that, shooting. That's literally like you. where I'm at right now. <laughs> it's like, you know, Luckily, I have these guys to support the hell out of me. Like, whatever I do, they're like, mm -hmm. go do it. And mm -hmm. no, they don't give me a hard time. But, you know, there, there is that kind of moment I feel like I'm approaching where it's like, I got to go do it. 
you know, like, I don't know when that moment is. I'm being patient. I've learned patience is key. But yeah, I feel that too. You're going to do it. Yeah. Of course. It's not, it's inevitable. Of course. You I know? think it's just like in your, it, when you're in the journey, Yeah, there's that moment where you're coming to that, that precipice. You know, like, what is yeah. it? Apex, <laughs> whatever yeah. you want to call it. Yeah. Precipice. Yeah. precipice. I was saying that word last week. I didn't know how to. It's a vibration, bro. It is a vibration. I was, West. Uh, didn't were, I say were, precipice? How many times? It, you were giving it to me, bro. <laughs> Damn, I, I like I just this is the like I usually am, blah, 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 but uh, I feel like a sponge, like when I entered very dry, and now I'm like soaked in this shit. Like mm. I want to walk out of here and just like sit down and like kill all my Wednesday night bullshit plans and like write yo goals 2019, goals 2020, mm-hmm. goals 2025. You know what I'm saying? Like you are inspiring, um, like. I, I think people watching the show are just going to be like, dude, wow. Like this dude's got such a crazy way. Are there goal killers? Are there things that just like completely kill your dreams or your goals? For me, bro, I'm a delusional optimist. Like everything can be crashing. I could be on the Titanic. Like we're going down. I look at the little lifeboat like, I'm going to be just as dry on the little lifeboat. Like, if we're just, I'll be dry on the Titanic. I'll be dry on the lifeboat. You, we're good. Do you, think that's because of, <laughs> do you think that's because of shit you've been through? Because I'm the same I'm the same way. I wake up in the morning with a smile on my face. I go to bed at night with a smile. Like, I'm Yo, you're lucky to be laughing. alive. That's what I'm saying. You're lucky to be. You've escaped death, at like, 20 times. I was going to say 10 times, at times. least. Yeah. They don't even know. Like, I... This dude tells me stories, and so, like, I understand that. He knows, like, some of the stories. I got a book that I've been writing, and mm. should, hopefully it'll be out but that's, soon. But that's a good question. Is it because you've been through so much? Like, perspective, does it— does I, had, it- I had to train myself, and I do this thing called I'm on a winning streak. And it, it's a momentum. It's, it's literally the gym for momentum. So when I wake up in the morning, um, I start off with, like, my cup of coffee at Starbucks— Go to the counter, boom, double shot of espresso on ice, splash of almond milk, two raw sugars. The lady says to me, that'll be $2.40. I said, all that happiness for only (laughs) (laughs) $2.40? Some people buy Lamborghinis to find happiness. Some people try to buy mansions to find happiness. I'm getting all this happiness for $2.40. I'm on a winning streak. And I start my winning streak every day because if I'm looking for the winning streak, I'm going to find it. I started a winning streak. I mean, if you have a a 14 gig winning streak, there's only one thing on your mind, 15. So if I'm looking, oh, I'm a winner. Boom. Green light. Winning streak. Boom. Catch the good parking spot. Winning streak. And I'm going throughout my day only looking for wins. And then my frequency turns into a winning frequency. When we're, when we're losing and we're negative and we're stuck and we're stale, we're like, man, life sucks. Oh, uh, look at this bad thing. Oh, uh, stump my toe. Oh, uh, somebody's screaming. Oh, uh, bad parking spot. You're literally looking for the negatives. But what we have in our brains is this thing called the reticular activating system. And it's the part of our brain that filters, like right now, your eyes are technically looking at like 10 million data points. Yeah. But it's only telling you a couple. That's your reticular activating system. For example, like what kind of car do you have? Uh, Mercedes. Mercedes. When you bought that Mercedes, you started seeing them everywhere, right? Like that's the reticular uh, activating uh, system. Uh. It's now, now you've said to your brain, program Mercedes G wagon, and we mm-hmm. see him everywhere we go. Yeah. We always say, "Look at that!" He always says, "Look at that G wagon." Look at that. I actually, I actually, I actually shit G-Wagon. on him. I shit on him. Some of them. Then All we see big them. orange Not ones, the, and you're I got like, a shovel on mine. Nonetheless, and an every G wagon, he says, "Look how stupid that G wagon." But it's always the G wagon, though. <laughs> Absolutely. It might be stupid, but it's still the whole story. I, crazy. I like what you said. Delusional optimist. Mm-hmm. Love that. Love that term. And yeah, you're absolutely right. Can you got that, a book? Can that get dangerous? No. He, so, so I have a book written called The Life and Death of CEO Charlie. Every agent in the game and every publisher, I've talked to all of them. They're like, we don't want the book. 
you're not a big enough celebrity. You don't have a million followers. You should write a self-help book. I'm like, self-help books are stale and boring. I was like, Walt Disney teaches better lessons with his stories than a self-help book that tells you 14 steps to blah, blah, blah. I've read a lot of self-help books, but I believe in the power of storytelling. We learn more from Simba and Rafiki looking into the, into, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah, like yeah. looking into the and seeing who he truly is or Moana. Like she was called on a journey Love like Moana. to chase her, to yeah. chase her dream to save the world it's like i don't want to write a boring self-help book and i've just like kind of like like all right y'all don't want to give me a book deal fine damn it's bro. cool i'm not worried about it. books written fifty thousand words i've written with a three times new york times best-selling wow. author but they're sleeping on me because crazy. i haven't blown up yet. yo that, but it's cool because it's, it's coming it's funny mm -hmm. that you say that because everyone i talk to is like make sure you have a lot of info in there about the steps you took, mm -hmm. like talk about exactly how you did it. Like step, 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 step. And I, the way it's written right now, it's just a story. Bro, That's it. It's the just the biggest a books story, in the world bro. are stories. You take, for instance, um, uh, the alchemist. Yeah. It's a self-help book. It's just a story about a kid who walked through a desert. It's not 10 steps, but, but these publishers, they're caught on the wrong thing. Like the world doesn't need another stale book. Like, my, my, my book starts off with how I got the name CEO. It starts off first chapter. I ended up on Judge Hatchet. I was suing a guy at the age of 12 for a saxophone. Like I've lived a crazy story and I teach all these crazy lessons about how I did all these crazy things my whole life. Like you've ever heard of like the site Nice Kicks? Dot com or kicksonfire.com like that comes from me mm. like I ran the clothing line for nice kicks in my mom's basement kicks on fire me and my business partner I started a hip-hop website and he started the shoe website we were business partners kicks on fire biggest shoe blog in the world like like I come from culture I've done so many crazy things and people have to hear the stories you uh you, again I can relate to you on in, on so many levels and one of them is you want to do a lot of stuff and you've done a lot of stuff. And I have that sort of addictive person. Like I just like my goal when I moved to Los Angeles was to be the biggest entertainer in the world. And I, I use the word entertainer because it's not like I don't want the biggest podcast in the world, although we have it impulsive like and subscribe. I don't want to be the biggest actor or uh, YouTuber. I just want to be the biggest entertainer. I want to make people smile and laugh on a daily basis. Yes. But um, when you are at the bottom of the mountain, and you've never hiked before. Mm -hmm. How do you overcome that mentally? <laughs> and 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 think mountain, mountain Everest. Because I'm sure when you like again, I can't get over when you were 305 pounds and you were 28 years old and told all your friends and people you worked with, I'm gonna run an Ironman. Like I, if someone told me that, I'd be like, I mean, not. Nah, I would always be like, like, okay, you can do it. But in the back of my mind, I'd be like. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. Delusional optimists live at the finish line. The present doesn't exist. The past definitely doesn't exist. Andre 3000 has a lyric. My spaceship don't come equipped with rear view mirrors we dip. Last oh, type. Past don't even exist. Where I'm at right now doesn't exist. I'm living in here. I'm living at the finish line constantly. So when somebody tells me no, like the publisher tells me no, you think I'm worried about that? I already know what the future is. I don't care that you said no. I said it's already done. Time hasn't caught up yet. Everything. So you know what paranoid means? The universe is conspiring against you. Like somebody who's paranoid. Everything is like mm -hmm. going against me. Pronoid is the universe is conspiring for me. Mm. I'm like, oh, that late, that, that, you know, publisher. Oh, you just did that just because, boom, something else is about to happen. I'm protected. My blessing is protected. I've got this shield around me like, oh, thank you for not saying yes. Like, I'm thinking everything is conspiring for me at all times. I'm a delusional optimist, constantly on a winning streak. It was a winning streak that that publisher said no, because I just got protected. You get in a contract with the red person. I was like, thank you. Like, that wasn't the right fit. I'm protected. I'm constantly at the finish line. I feel like I know the answer to this question, but what happens if your dreams or your goals don't come true? Mm -hmm. I just picked another one. Okay. Every time. I've got it. Like, 
Remember how earlier we were talking about the hero's journey? Mm -hmm. I just got to be called to go do something crazy. That's the only time I'm happy. I don't like sitting at home. Martin Luther King wasn't sitting at home. Like, he had a dream. And he got out. And he crusaded for that dream every day. And that's what I like to do. And the second something doesn't happen, I'm moving. But I believe in it every time. And I I still know it's going to happen every time. Mm. Are you religious? Absolutely. Religious, spiritual, quantum, God, universe. Like, uh... Do you define yourself as a Christian? Yeah. Or a Catholic? A Christian? Jesus is dope. Jesus is dope. Jesus is dope. Like, Jesus did more in three. Like, I'm fascinated by somebody who can do three years worth of work, and it could last 2,000 years. Like, I'm fascinated by ism. Like, an ism. Like, for example, I'm vegan. You're vegan too, right? Yeah. All right. So, some dude don't know his name thought of this thing called veganism. He's up in heaven right now looking down like, it's still going. You know, the guy who started stoicism, don't know who it is. You might, like, he's up in heaven. What's stoicism? It's like being like tough, like in the- Being like, stoic? Yeah, being oh, stoic. Okay, okay. So it's like, it's an ism. It's a way of life. Ah, ism. Okay, I see what you're saying. So an ism ah. is a way of life. He's up in heaven 2,000 years later. He's like, yeah, the stoicism still going. Uh, like, I'm fascinated by that. Like teaching people a better way of life. That's what Jesus did. He did it for about three years. Still going. I like that. I would like that for me. Mm. I would like to be able to teach people by the time I leave this earth to teach people a certain way of life that helps them improve and me be up in heaven 2,000 years later. Like still going. What would yours be called? I have no idea. Rocketism. Charlieism. No, that's a little. That's, that's Win, a little. Winningism, victorism. Maybe something with quantum. I would love to quantum create a cool. quantum citizen. Quantism. Because that is the one thing. Like for example, Tony Robbins wears a quantum pendant, but he doesn't teach people about quantum physics. Like he's, most, he's holding the secrets. Most of these guys like <sighs> that's good Tony. Quantum physics explains the law of attraction, and it is the end all. Like once you understand quantum and like study it, like you're pretty much unlocked. You don't need to go back to a seminar once you're unlocked. Do you think a lot of these self-help teachers know that and Absolutely. they just continue to profit off of something that works? Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm in the motivational speaker space and I have to say, and I'll get in trouble for this. I don't like it. I don't like it. There's a lot of predators, self-serving predators, and I don't like it at all. It, it makes me sick. Yeah. That's where That's where I... Coming out of college at Michigan State, I started working with Bob Proctor. Mm. That was my first job mm. out of school. So mm. I started reading these books. Same thing. I was like, you know, I'm going to work for Bob Proctor after I met him one mm. time. And I worked with him for a year. And then that's when I moved out to LA, met Jake, met Logan. And same thing. Like that that industry, it can lock you in, mm-hmm. you know? And so I think older generations are locked in there. But I think younger generations are getting that personal development from so many other different ways. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. I believe entertainment is more powerful than self-help. And there's never been somebody who could figure out how to bridge the gap. Because I look at a self-help event, like like 2,000 people are there. Like, I come from like 100,000 people in the crowd. Like, and like we truly know how to penetrate in entertainment. Self-help is like, mm-mm. it's like there needs to be a new age of self-help. Mm-hmm. That's not so, like, for example... I lost a speaking engagement the other day because I was on Instagram talking about I had a bad day. Like, I'm honest on my page. Like, I get depressed. I get down. I have bad days. You know, you follow me. Like, I have bad days. And they said, well, we can't book a motivational speaker who's not motivated. What the fuck? I'm like, I'm like, (laughs) oh my God. I'm like, it's real. People need something real. It's just the motivation world, the self-help world, like, most of these guys have to be perfect every I'm day. So, of their lives. Yo, I'm so over that fake shit. That is the we that is are. the new mm-hmm. the new wave is being real, yeah. is being authentic, being vulnerable, being a little fucked up, being a little whatever. That's mm-hmm. the new shit. I'm calling it right now. That's a that's the new ism, realism, mm. like straight up, yo. No more of that petty bullshit, mm-hmm. cowering to this, cowering to that. Next couple of years, the new wave is. Yo, 
I was 305 pounds. Now I'm not. I was a heroin addict. Now I'm not. I was struggling and I was poor. Now I'm not. It's not, yo, I was a child actor. Now I'm a youth. Like, it's fucking, yo, what did you overcome? What mm-hmm. made you real? Yeah, That's hot. One bro. of the, this is, this is definitely controversial to those who get it, but I completely agree. And one way I know is from my upbringing with self-help. You know the book, Think and Grow Rich. Mm-hmm. You know it? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't read Big it. Big one. I can't read that it. That book is all based <laughs> off of Andrew Carnegie, uh, Napoleon Hill studying from Andrew Carnegie. Like mm-hmm. they met and he wrote this philosophy in a book. Right. Love There's the no documented meeting between those two. Mm. And if you look this up, the guy who studied Andrew Carnegie said Napoleon Hill and Andrew Carnegie never met. Wait, what? Mm. He oh, never met. So what's the happening. whole thing was- What's happening? The whole book isn't real. What the fuck are you saying? The whole book was based on meeting about this that meeting that he happens. never had. So how this, can you? How does that happen? How can you lie about that? Well, it's, it's the top ten. One of the top ten know, selling wait, books I in didn't the world. Know, it's on my um list. I, it's sitting yeah. out there to read. It's a great book. The it never information happened. in there is incredible. None of these interviews are proven. It's oh almost. My God. It, it, it almost. And I, it, one, I, I did my research. I'm not just saying this off of one thing I read. I emailed the guy that, and I'll show you guys this after. I emailed the guy who studied Andrew Carnegie, wrote his biography, wrote multiple books about Andrew Carnegie. So he knows how this guy speaks. Andrew Carnegie was one of the richest men to ever walk the planet. Mm -hmm. Like law of attraction, this guy knew what was up. Built America. Napoleon Hill didn't start talking about this meeting until like 10 years after his death. And the guy who was his biographer, you know, who wrote this biography said, I know for a fact they never met. And this hmm. is not how Andrew Carnegie spoke. When did you find this information out? Like two nights ago, dude. I was going I, I, where, deep I was about to say, wait, hole. didn't you, didn't- This you, was the book I came up to. You told me then. Yeah. Didn't you told me that Napoleon Hill had a meeting with Andrew Carnegie and he like died with all his secrets, but Napoleon was the only one who like knew- Well, it's one of the writing. biggest books. I mean, it's not a it's small, huge. it's so, one of the it's biggest- It's so massive. So is, then, is, is, Napoleon, is Napoleon Hill then a genius in his own? I mean, if he can we'll, make- We'll leave it up. I don't think so. I think it's, I think there's, well, I think the you can't build something from? like that. Why, why is the book so great? He's a great writer. And I think he had some other people that, that he was getting his knowledge from. Should I read the book? I didn't tell. No. No way. Just, well, just study quantum physics instead. Yeah. Well, we'll get right to the source. My, 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 point, test, it, my point is to build <laughs> Mike's point is that I think the generations before us, that's one of the, most read books compared, like we're talking Bible, Think and Grow Rich, yeah. <laughs> these types of things. Whoa. But so I, our, the generations before us are studying from things. They're living a certain way right now that's not real. Like it's not real. So I agree with you. I think there is a way to tap into being real, being authentic, not trying to be perfect, like you said, and just be in the moment. Like One, make your own story. Stop, let's stop looking back at these people. It's time to do the, the The comparison I make that makes the most sense for my story is when I look at a million little pieces. Did you guys hear the story of that with Oprah? It was one of the best sell- sellers on Oprah's mm. uh, best sellers list of all time. All about James Fry's struggle with addiction. And he wrote this whole book about addiction, and alcoholism, and all these terrible things he went through. went through. None of it was true. Mm. Every single piece of it was debunked. Uh, he was not a it's crazy. Net, net, none of it ever. And he, this sold mil, like millions. Like it was one of the biggest sellers do, of all do, time. Do you read books, Charlie? Oh yeah. I've had to stop though. Why? Too much books. Addicted like, to books. No, nah, I was. I was becoming. Books? I was becoming too much of what I was consuming, and now I have all these. I've kind of like tapped into my own philosophies and I'm able to boil things down because I'm not consuming. But there was a point in time I read a lot, but I started asking myself what makes sense. I love that. That's what makes sense. And you to write, me. obviously. All right. My 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 biggest problem with reading, and I've iterated it to these guys before, I can't always wrap my head around adopting someone else's philosophy. Like no matter who they are, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I've always found the best way for me to live and I've gotten most of my wins from is just experiencing things. Just, well, you, just you pushing came, myself At past. one point, there was a time where at war, we would stand in a field 
Yo, what and the I would fuck? look at you yeah, so Bob, stupid, Bob, and you would look at me. But that was the old war, and if we were reading books on how to fight war, nobody would have ever hid behind a tree. So we. Um, this is the beauty of being young and broke. When you're young and broke, it forces you to innovate. Hey, hold on a sec. By the way, also, if you're broke at all, let's not even use you. True. If you're 60 and True. broke, you still got to innovate. Absolutely. Young ain't got nothing to do with it. It's, it's, we say, or we were talking to P about it the other day. We said inspiration and desperation are the two drivers in life. Fact. So either you're inspired by someone else, which I am by you right now, but I've also been in hella places in my life where I was desperate as fuck. Yeah. And that desperation drove even bigger increases. Like that's the shit that pushed me through the moon, like needing to do stuff. Change comes from inspiration yeah. or desperation. I think yeah. your story, Logan, in particular, like you found that on your own. Like I think your story is, is amazing because you come from Ohio, you come from the small town, small family, and just out of nowhere, pfft, like becomes number one celebrity in the world. Rocket ship. And I think, you know, to the people out there like myself, I was I was going through college and I was like lost. I was like, dude, yeah, my way is not working. Yeah. And that's why I turned to books because I was like, I, I just got real with myself. I was sitting in my dorm room and I was like, yo, my way is not working. I'm gonna try someone else's. Ah, and when, ah, when I, I see, tried that I other person's, I, I was like, I'm gonna stop thinking completely the way I've thought. Okay. I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm gonna try this way. And so I think the same thing can be done with what you're doing, Charlie, or what you're doing, Logan, or yeah. Mike, or or me. I think it's like if you are out there and you're listening or you're watching, it's you can adopt somebody else's mindset. Uh, you see. can leave I yours see. behind. Or it doesn't have to be a book. It can be whatever. But it be real with yourself. If your way isn't working, try a different way. Yeah. It, yeah. I, I, I love that. It, it is also subjective. And by the way, I'm reading a book now. It's called... Uh, how to win friends and influence people. Yeah. And, and you said, you said, if it makes sense. So that's what I'm doing. Like the first chapter of the book, quite frankly, I disagree with the second chapter. I'm only two chapters in. I apply every day. And again, the first one I, I strongly disagree with. It's actually, I'll, I'll say it. it's um the rule is he said, don't criticize people. Don't criticize, condemn or some other C word. I agree with the condemn. I don't like the condemn, but I'll I'll criticize people until the cows come home. Like, what's his reasoning? Is it a waste of your time? No. Um. What was it? He. I think he said some people don't. I think it was like people don't respond well to criticism. They like, just won't even hear you. They'll put a yeah, ball up. Yeah. Yeah. You're which, not going to get anywhere. Which like, yo, if someone criticizes me, like I'm changing, and I agree with it. Like I'm, I will change. Well, it's constructive criticism. I think that's where like. He, criticism he was, versus he, constructive criticism. He, no, he was, I mean, maybe I interpreted it wrong. Does anyone have a book club I could join? But <laughs> I, it, it's, it sounded like he would just be silent about it and instead just praise. Because you know, if like a child's misbehaving, they say like praise the child for what he does right or can convince him why he should not do that via positive reinforcement instead of like scolding him and smacking him. I got the shit kicked out of me when I was younger. Shout out Greg Paul. I'm being sarcastic. He'll he'll kill me. Child Protective Services, but uh, <laughs> no, no, I'm not kidding. He beat the shit yeah, out yeah, of the me. The belt came in. The I, belt, I, I, the, I, all it, the classic happened with me too, yeah, bro. Like it, our generation, we'd always oh, you probably up. got I your got ass. You got bad. flogged my dad, in school. My, my dad, my well, not in school, but my dad. He was forced to kneel on peppercorns and he used to get hit with this thing called what the, the hell's a yeah, peppercorn. It's a cat of nine tails. Each his dad had a, his gets dad had a belt with nine belts on it. Yeah. When he the smacked cat. the shit out, pipes every my dad got <laughs> fucked up. That's why. So by the time this is in my book, so by the time it got time it's in your for, DNA. For, for the time it came for me to get hit, his dad had hit him, his dad had hit him. And when and when they when my dad was like, yo. It's time to fuck these kids up. <laughs> he did it, bro. Yo, and, and by the way, my mom too. My mom would hit me with a spoon. Me too. Once, and I dodged. Wooden spoon. And she she hit the counter with her hand, like almost broke her hand. Anyways, the point is, I'm gonna come back from this tangent. <laughs> Personally, I respond well to criticism because like I gotta fix something. I, I think the thing with you that's tough with with stuff like this, and I think to Spencer's point is you are such a anomaly to like the general person. You're like, you're like, you're like, you know, I, I, you're like, I came out of school, I started YouTube and now I'm a billion. You know what I'm saying? What like do you it's, think? It, no, no, no. I'm just saying. So like, but him so, too. No, I, I no, love criticism. No, 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 not on criticism. Oh, okay. I just mean on like adopting, like for the jet, for the average person, 
going through life, picking, picking up like a sponge, little things they can use here and there is, is very helpful. You know what I'm saying? And for, and for Spencer diving completely into mindsets that help motivate him to do better, to do certain things in his life has been helpful for him. Go At to, the end of the day, it's going to gonna be Instagram. what works for you. Here, like what I'll works show, for you? I'll show you, bro. I'm no anomaly on my Instagram. I've, I've I made a whiteboard that like in, in my little Instagram world went viral. Um, and it's, it's called How Many Times I Fail. And remember how I started off this journey of like being a mess up? What speed scroll? Yep, yep. You'll see a whiteboard that just says, nope, not that one. Not that one. Keep going. <laughs> I'm good at finding the whiteboards though, if you can tell. Boom. There's two here. Boom. Top right there, right there. How many times I failed? Boom. Boom. Here we go. And it wasn't until, so it, it, was, it was literally just trying to figure out how to be a little bit tougher. The only anomaly I've got is the same thing that like, like my dad always was a little afraid I was going to be soft. Like I was overweight. He liked working on cars. I liked being on the computer. He always had this little fear that I was going to be soft. And there was one day we're driving. I had just bought a T-Mobile sidekick. We're driving to Florida, father-son vacation. Old 56 Dodge, my dad's car. We had to drive it at nighttime because if we drove it during the daytime, it would overheat. He says, boom, let's look at the stars. Pulls over on the side of a little two-lane highway in the middle of nowhere. Look up at the stars, get back in the car, car stuck in the mud. I have to get out of the car, start pushing the car. Boom, get back in the car. We're driving down the road. I fall asleep. Wake up. 30 minutes, 40 minutes later. Boom, feel for my T-Mobile sidekick. I said, Pops, I, I can't find it. I can't, I can't find my phone. Like, like I had just saved up all my money for this. Like I'm a kid. Like this was my phone. This was like the first iPhone. Like it was awesome. Mm -hmm. I said, Pops, I think I maybe dropped it when I was having to push the car. How far back do you think it was? This is the middle of the night, pitch black country, Georgia, Southern Georgia. He said, it might've been 15 miles back. It might've been 40 miles back. He said, let's go look for it. I said, that'd be impossible. Like, what if we're like 20 miles off? Like, what if we're five miles off? Like, it's like, like needle in a haystack mm -hmm. over the course of, 30, of of Iron Man, trying to find a little, he's looking for it for five hours. I start like getting mad at him. Pops, let's go to the beach. Like, forget the phone. I'll buy another one. He gave up. I said, told you, you couldn't find it. Let's go. I had to be right. We go to the beach for five days, get back in the car to head back home to Atlanta. I, he says, he says to me, he says, we're going home. I said, whatever you do, don't stop and try to guess where this phone is. I'm not doing this for another five hours. I'm asleep in the car, wake up. We're on the side of the road. My dad is nowhere to be found. I turn on the car, start driving up the highway, look for him. I'm cussing him out. Pops, Pops, man, come on, man. Like, you're not going to find the phone. We might be 30 miles, 50 miles away from it. Who knows? You might walk right past and don't even see it. Like, it's in a black case in the middle of the night. He said, never tell me I can't do something. Never, ever tell me I can't do something. I was like, forget this. Take the car back over. Just I'm sitting on the hood. Four or five hours pass. Old man is crazy. I see the old man walking down the highway with the flashlight. As he's getting closer... I see his hand in the air. <laughs> he walks up to me after me giving him hell of saying he's crazy for thinking he could find this thing. He says, never, ever tell me I can't do something and never tell, let anybody tell you you can't do something. And then that's that moment in my life. I was like, I got to prove to my dad I could be tough like how he's mm, tough. Mm. And that's why when I'm failing every single time, everything I'm doing, I'm failing and I'm like record deals are being pulled out. Like artists are firing me. Boom. I'm, I'm like, I have to learn how to be tough. That's the only thing in my life I've got to learn how to do. I love failing. I love it. It's one of my favorite things because it's mm. the only way I get better. And like, I'm so numb to the minor fail failures now. Like, they got to be big. Your dad found the phone. You still have the sidekick? Like, I wish. Did he? He found it though. Yeah, he. That was oh, was in his hand. He found it. Should have held on to that that thing. Dude. Um, oh, bro. We were not allowed to say can't in our house growing up. That's amazing. My, my dad would not let us say I can't. 
make sense why you're where you're at. Then I got a little smarter and I said, Dad, I'm unable to do this. He says, that's can't. You're saying can't. <laughs> and then he beat your ass. Then he whooped my ass and, and threw me out a set of stairs. Of that was one time. Um, <laughs> hey, can we go to the audio only? Absolutely. Man, this has been a fucking pleasure. Get a gift. You've been a gift from God today, man. Crazy. And I want to shake your hand. Thank you. Crazy. Thanks for coming on a Paul yeah, man. man. Crazy. Thank, thank y'all. Of thank course. you, brother. Thank it's you. the number one podcast in the world. I couldn't make it up. Okay. It's a fact. <laughs> if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. We're about to do an audio only Q and A with Charlie Rocket right now. Spotify and iTunes. Hit us up there. We're gonna get juicy. Where can they find you on social? It's at Charlie, right? At Charlie. Yeah. That's cool. All right. We'll see you guys next time. Take it easy, man. Peace. And I remember there was one time I went to Memphis and I, I binge ate and I had on this like button up shirt and I was eat, I ate like 15,000 calories that night. I woke up the next morning and my skin was bruised. My entire body was bruised everywhere I would touch my skin because my body expanded oh my so God. much overnight that the shirt I was wearing the day before wouldn't even fit.